there was a lot of talk in the popular press prior to, um, in fact, it's still, it's, this chatter still continues around our predecessors like MySp uh, MySpace and, and Friendster, that these online interactions were somehow uh, virtual, that it was dating, that it was like, um, you know, people hooking up, and, 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 and that was kind of the story of the first generation of the web. That was the sort of Web 1.0 story. Um, online community in the in that Web 1.0 universe was, um, you know, we, we sometimes it causes we talk about like the the Star Wars fanatic who went under the handle like Boba Fett 225 and hung out with other Star Wars fanatics in this in this sort of online community of people who they would not otherwise have met. Um, but you, you know, you fast forward to like 2002, 2003, and all the big problems on the internet have big consumer problems appear to have been solved. So you've solved like the big retail problem, Amazon and eBay. You've solved um, the media distribution problem somewhat with things like YouTube. Uh, you know, Napster and digital distribution of music still hasn't quite been figured out, but Apple's made great, great progress in that direction. Um, but the identity problem remains unsolved. There is no online um, there is no sort of online instantiation of your real identity. In 03, or so. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And, 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 and so this, 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 this there's, there's, I don't want to get into a huge conversation about online identity management because it has a lot more to do with just, than just who you are socially. It has to do with like who you are as far as the government is concerned, your sort of, your ability to authenticate yourself, single sign in across, across hundreds of thousands of websites. Um, but this whole basic problem kind of remained unsolved. And so a, a lot of, there was quite a bit of intent early on to build a system that was a reflection of your real identity. And so we, and, and some of that was engineered. So I think this gets at your question. So, um, you know, we, we required um, you to use your real name, essentially. You, because we started with college, we had an email address that we could authenticate and you typically only got one email address per student at college. There are some colleges where that was <coughs> fudged and you can obviously figure out ways around it, but that enforced this sort of one person per identity token. Um, and, and then we made, we went out of our way to enforce in the early deployment um, the idea that everyone had to have a picture. You couldn't, you couldn't get on Facebook without a picture. We would de-emphasize you in the search results. I believe we even had schools where we required you to have a picture, and we tracked this very that closely. I didn't know. We tracked this very, very closely. We looked at... You we didn't looked, tell me that when I interviewed I, you, well, damn it. Okay. We, 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 you, you, you picked up the message about identity really well, though, which is, so, which is like the core important message. Um, so it was... We were tracking very closely, you know, what percentage of people had pictures, and it was seen as a very, a very bad thing when people didn't have pictures. So, um, you know, I think that, I think this was definitely the intention. We, we, as you said, the, the tools are not currently there, and this is my biggest criticism of the Facebook product today. And when I spend time working with the Facebook product team, this is the thing I'm always pushing: is that, you know. Um, the tools for segmenting or compartmentalizing your life and broadcasting information to one group versus another and subscribing information from one group versus another are not advanced enough yet. Uh, we, we, you know, Facebook does, makes an algorithmic distinction behind the scenes about who you're better friends with. And that's something that a, a lot of people may not know, that when you look at your feed, it's biased towards people who you're actually interacting with more. So this is, a, this is kind of an algorithmic proxy for these, these mental categories that you, you, you place your friends in in real life. We need to get much better at building tools so that you can explicitly organize your friends into these different categories. You can publish information and subscribe to information from those groups. Lists is the first attempt at that, but it's not seamlessly integrated into the interface. It, so there's, a, there's what we would call in product design a discovery problem. People well, interestingly, lists were better integrated for a few months, and then they de-emphasized them in the most recent interface design. So it's much for, harder to do than it was. Because they've gone back towards the algorithmic. And, so, and, and this, this happens because it's a mass product. And we're trying to serve the needs of, of the mass population. And it, it turns out it's much easier to use an algorithm that looks at the way people interact to make a judgment about what information you should see than it is to turn that those tools over to everyone and get this very lopsided experience where some people have a good you know have a have a good clean information filter and some people are get, are just getting noise because they're. That seems like a very key point. I don't think all of us understand the difference between the algorithm and the list. 
Well, just briefly describe what you mean by algorithm in case people don't know what that Well, the, the, when you log into Facebook, there's something called the news feed, which right. is your, your homepage experience. That was one of the big innovations that distinguished us from all prior networks. Um, and the, the news feed is determined algorithmically. So you may have 500 friends, but you probably don't care about all 500 of those people. You care about a subset of them. And Facebook is looking at your interactions with people uh, you know, who's writing on your wall, whose wall are you writing on, uh, you know, what things, what, what, what information do you click on versus not click on, in order to make a determination about how that feed should be presented. Now, you can always go and look at the sort of real-time list of all of the information that's, that's flowing into your feed, uh, you know, but, but for, for many people, that would be unmanageable. You know, the basic point is, is software figuring out what you see, or are you figuring it out yourself? You know, it's and it should be both, yeah. ultimately. Um, but, uh, and then, you know, kind of going back to your point about when you were introducing me, you were talking about, you know, uh, we looked at the military. Uh, th there was, at the, in the early days of Facebook, um, MySpace had caught on, had, I think, over 100 million users at that point. Friendster had fallen by the wayside. They'd peaked at about 60 million users. Um, the only markets, so I, I wanted to make a play in social networking, and the only markets that were open were these peculiar markets where the density of social, of social connections was much, much higher, where you, you spent most of your time hanging out with um, the same type of people um, in, a, in, a, in a very dense and, and, and kind of environment where, uh, and, and, and the, so the two markets that were not on Facebook, and I only bring up the military as an example of kind of another market, but basically college kids and the military. And they have these similar characteristics where like, Military people are, they leave home, they're hanging out only with other military people, they're on a military base or they're abroad. College, they leave home, they're sort of, you know, on a campus hanging out only with other college kids. And these were like the two groups of people that we identified that were not using Facebook. And obviously, military would be a terrible place not to start. Not using social networks at the uh, time. Right, sorry, 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 that's what I mean. Not using Friendster or MySpace. Right. So, so, you know, and you could ask yourself, you know, why is, you could have a long sociological debate about why, why this is the case, and I could give you my theories, but the reality was it was just these two groups that weren't doing it. And college was the one that made a ton of sense, and military was the one that made obviously no sense. So we went, we went, um, and, or my, I, I emphasized college and started talking to these various kids who had built college social networks. Yeah, because there were other social networks at colleges that Sean identified and went and talked to also. But they just, you don't hear about them anymore because they all disappeared. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, college is this unique time in your, in your life where some studies indicate you have more friends, that you are more social than at any other time in your life. Uh, so it's, this, so it, it sort of, in some ways, was perfect. And you kind of ask yourself the question, well, why is it that uh, college kids were not using social networks when they're so densely interconnected and so social. Um, well, it just turned out they weren't using MySpace, they weren't using Friendster, and there are probably socioeconomic reasons why that was the case. Um, but college ended up being the perfect place to start and then had this added bonus of, of helping us establish real identity. And that was, that was at least uh, kind of directionally the one thing that I pushed the hardest in the beginning of the company, if there was one philosophical point, it was that this needs to be um, about mapping, creating, creating a fairly accurate map of your, real, of your real world interactions. It's not a perfect map, obviously. It's very fuzzy and very, and, and your real life interactions are much messier and you have acquaintances and real friends and, and best friends and, you know, and, and people who, who are transactional in your life and people who are, who are, who are much more what you'd call a friend. Um, you know, coworkers versus versus you know old, you know old flames and old high school friends and all sorts. So it's this very messy set of interactions, and we don't do a good job at Facebook mirroring all of that messiness and complexity. But I think that's the fundamental challenge for the for the product going forward. Yeah. Can I? Yeah, I have another question. Because um, so you were talking about the kind of design um, decisions that helped reinforce this offline identity, and, and I just was curious about your thoughts about the friends list, because to me that also seems to serve a very important role in that it constrains what I say about myself. If I know 300 people are going to call me out, right, if I lie, and that's why mm -hmm. online yeah, dating yeah, the, profiles, right, would be very totally, different. Totally, totally, okay. yeah, this is very, very important, yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, it, 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 online dating profiles, and even MySpace to, 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 to some extent, MySpace was or is a social network, but um, you know people tended to people tended to uh, 
You should have seen the thing I said in a, in a, in a, in a recent talk about MySpace. It was all over Twitter, and it was somewhat embarrassing. Um, but uh, so, so yeah, MySpace, uh, kids tended to kind of put their best foot forward. That would be the way of uh, diplomatically or euphemistically putting it. They, they often had this kind of online alter ego, uh, and it was kind of, um, you know, the distinction that, that I've kind of made between the Facebook user and the MySpace user is that um, users of MySpace tended to um, they tended to work to live. So work and their profession and their and their occupation was kind of secondary um, to it was just you know it, what they had to do to make ends meet in order to be like a photographer or like have a cool hairdo or like you know dress and look a certain way and identify with a certain cultural group. And this is I'm broadly overgeneralizing here, but Facebook users tended to uh, tended to uh, work to live like they were professional. Live to work. They, Worked, worked. I thought you just said. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Live. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> live. They tended to live to work. So they tended to be professional. They tended to uh, identify much more with their with their job and their career and their education and so forth. Um, so they're, they're, MySpace tended to be a little bit more of this virtual kind of early early internet. And and so it didn't matter as much what you what you broadcasted. Whereas you're right on Facebook, there was this there's this social scrutiny. It's your real friends who you're going to bump into face to face. Like you're going to see them in class. You're going to see them at work. You're going to and and so you there's a sense of accountability. 